Thank you, Carlos Ballas. We so appreciate you, your service, your patriotism, and your love for this country. And we just agree with you and everyone watching that America shall be saved. God loves America and America belongs to him in Jesus' name. Well, today I have been waiting for this guest for so long. She stays busy about her father's business. Uh, she herself uh, has been a television host, a television co-host. She sings like an angel. She's busy being a mom and a grandmother, doing social media, working in her church, serving the media mountain, and she's so talented. Uh, her reels and her short stories where she edifies and encourages women are so refreshing. You will meet a new friend today, and I'm sure that you will start following her and enjoying and receiving blessings from her ministry. Angie, it's so Aww. great to have you. Thank you. It's such a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Thank you so much. Well, I know that you had to schedule this in and all of okay. the things. That's <laughs> okay. I've been wanting to come over here and visit your set. Just, you know, be a part of what's going on here. It's beautiful. Well, I'm going to share a memory. And uh, I was talking to the girls about it this morning before we started. And thank you for serving communion to the team oh, and absolutely. just ministering. Yeah. Um, and you are a minister. Yeah, yes, you're a life coach. Yes, you, you've had so much experience. You have an extensive resume um, in kingdom business, and I want you to share your story. But one, uh, of course, um, during one season of your life, um, you were everywhere, you know, from charisma to, to radio, to television, to just all kinds of platforms. And we went over to the building, and I, that... Um, where you were co-pastoring. And mm -hmm. when I walked into your office, the yellow, <laughs> the royal blue, the pink, I stood there and said, God, this, I want this on earth. I know I might have to wait till heaven, but I had never been in such a trendy, cool, wow. out living out loud office. And I'm like, oh, I, I could work 24-7 in this <laughs> office. It was beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's funny because now uh, my choice of color are grays and white walls. Oh, wow. <laughs> totally transformation. Total transformation. <laughs> Literal transformation. Yes. Yes. And you've had a lot of transitions in life. I have. I have. Yes. All for good, though. Yeah. Didn't feel like it in the middle of it. But every transition now, looking back... I can honestly say has been just another step in the right direction towards the plan and purpose God has had for me yeah. all along. You know, women, we have to, I believe we have to go through more transitions than men do. We yeah. have childbirth, we have a monthly yep. cycle, you know, we have summer, yep. spring, winter, fall every month. And, but it doesn't make it any easier. No. It doesn't. No. And you have weathered storms and you have come through transitions with so much elegance and grace. And I appreciate because in the middle of your transitions, Angie, you've always talked about it and yeah. you've always gone public. You've shared it. You've never hidden it. And you've just been so real, which is so helpful for women, Thank especially you. Christian women. Because we yeah. think, oh, we have to use our faith. We have to have it all together. We can't be messy. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you've just been so precious and vocal. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, a long time ago, I guess, when I started this, this transition, all the transitions, not just one, but all the transitions, I was, I would be mad at God. You know, I'd be angry at God. It's like, I'm mad at the devil. I'm mad at God. So who do I believe? What do I trust? You know, all those things. And I had to go through a soul searching time. But when I finally came to the solid ground of the foundation of my faith, in that moment, I, I told myself out loud, because I do talk to myself out loud. If for, if for some reason, people think I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. I'm literally just building myself up, you know. Yeah. And uh, I told myself, Angie, you are going to tell people first about the healing that's going on in your life Amen. so that the devil can't use it against you. Because yeah. if he gets out in front of it, he's going to tell a bunch of lies and yeah. he's going to make me feel a little intimidated to say anything. But if I am just truthful and honest with my journey, with me, not throwing mud against anybody else, but yeah. just me and what I'm going through, then the devil can't use it against me. And I, I own that power because Christ lives in me yes. and I in him. So. Take us back and just share a little bit of your testimony, how you okay. grew up, 
how you came to Jesus, some of the major, you know, defining moments in your life. Sure, and it's gonna be quick and I'm gonna be talking fast, but, <laughs> cause I am 58 now, so a lot's happened between yes, zero know, and 58. I know, I know. <laughs> but, uh, so I grew up in a, in, a, in a home where both my parents were pastors and uh, had a wonderful upbringing, beautiful yeah. upbringing, and we were part of a denomination. And at the age of 17, I met and got engaged to uh, my husband that I had for about 20 years and then got married at 18 the week after I graduated high school. Wow. So I went straight from home into being a wife and went from ministry, full-time ministry, because I got out of, at, of school at midterm and I've worked full-time in ministry, got married, went into full-time ministry and it was just, you know, it was a blur. Everything yeah. happened so fast. Yeah. We we traveled, we ministered, we sang, we worshipped, and then we we served as co as I mean, as assistant pastors, as worship leaders, as youth pastors. We've played about every role you could play yeah. in the church or fulfilled those roles. Uh, we went on to Columbus, Ohio. We worked for uh, Rod Parsley yes. in Columbus, Ohio, and that's really where. God just kind of catapulted our ministry yeah. and we were thrusted at a very young age. Yeah. We were in our 20s and uh, had both of my children in my 20s. And then at the age of 27, I was 27 years old, my son was 10 months, my daughter was three, we decided to move to Orlando and start a church. And we did. And our first service, we had 253 people wow. and we grew from there. So that was in 93, and then by 1999, I believe, my years may be off one or two years, our year 2000, we, um, we merged our church with uh, Pastor Benny Hinn's church yeah. because he was moving out to the West Coast yeah. at the time. Yeah. So our congregation quadrupled. Exploded. Overnight, we had yeah. two staffs, <laughs> Yes. you know, because we didn't let anybody go. We figured over time that they would decide if they wanted to stay or go and, they, and that we prayed blessing on them as they, you know, whatever decision they chose to make, we understood. Yeah. So God navigated that. We brought my dad in. He helped with that transition with the staff. And so we got through all of that. And then in 2003, that's when, um, that's when the bottom fell out in my world. Yeah. And it, the season as a wife, as a pastor, all of that ended within literally just a moment. And when I say a moment, it was a moment. Wow. It was in a moment and I didn't see it coming and it was it was really, really tough. And I'm just speaking from my perspective. For me, it would it was gut wrenching and it to the point that I had taken on so much stress in my body yeah. with how I wasn't processing it the right way. I developed I got Bell's palsy, got my face was paralyzed for about four months on the right side. And I had a stomach ulcer that grew that I'd later found out I had, and I needed a couple of surgeries down the road for that reason. And um, I just lost my faith in God, my faith in humanity, my faith in the church, all of it. And I ran from God. I literally ran from Him. And I just, I figured if I was gonna be a sinner, I might as well be all in. <laughs> Like there's no in between when you're sinning, right? Yeah. So, you're, you're just miserable, I'm right? I'm miserable, so if I, I'm not gonna halfway sin because there's I didn't hear that in the Bible, but I heard sin is sin, so I'm just gonna dive in. So all the things I didn't do growing up, yeah. because I tried to live a very holy life growing mm -hmm. up, you know, uh, I've it got me to this and the pain I'm experiencing today. Well, you know, I'm not gonna I'm gonna try the other way now yeah. and see what happens. Of course, I didn't fit in that world either. Yeah. And it took a few years for me to finally come to a place of rest in God, finding my faith. And that's a whole nother, a whole nother uh, segment to talk yes. about. Yeah. But it brought me to where I am today. Yeah. I just, God got a hold of me. Yeah. I just decided to choose him. He never left me. That's, that's right. the thing yeah. is even when I was in the club, even when I was in my sin, he was right there on the side of me. Yeah. He was right there with me all along. We know even during that that season in your life, you were you were still shepherding people. You were I you were doing <laughs> yeah. videos on health and videos yeah. on essential and oils. I didn't know I was really videos. doing that. No, you were still helping the body. Um, and yeah. and I remember watching and going, she's just dynamic and she's anointed and. And, and, and the word would still come out of you. What was in you comes you know, out of you. <laughs> exactly. And that, that was what I began to learn over yeah. time is like, I'm running for ministry, but God's saying, no, the, I, the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. Yes. I'm not going to take them out of you just because you don't want to use them. Yeah. I'm going to show you how you're going to use them. And he just began to use me anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> he is amazing. He, he's sneaky. He is. Jehovah's sneaky. <laughs> he sneaky. is. He, but he, he keeps really me on my toes and he keeps me laughing and, and joyful even in yeah. all the transitions. Yeah. yeah. So you got to that moment that you just said, okay, God, I'm not going to run anymore, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. I did. I did. I just said, okay, if I'm going to be all in, just like when I was sinning, I'm going to be all in. Yeah. I'm going to be all in with you. And whatever that looks like, if that means getting back in church, if that means serving your kingdom in the church, as much as I was nervous about that, because yeah. I felt like the church was what failed me yeah. and, um, and stole my family from me, yeah. basically. Yeah. And, um, and, but what I felt like was tearing, a, a tearing away from, yeah. actually, God brought me back to that place to heal me. Yeah. So I got my life back, my breath back. Yeah when I went back to church, when I started serving again, and yeah. I started from the ground up yeah. because I wasn't there for me. And when I finally realized it's not about, what I'm doing here is not about me. Yeah. It's about the kingdom of God. That's right. So God, how can you use me to help someone else in the kingdom? And Genesis says, he told me, he said, Angie, he said, it's your breath in my lungs. Yeah. And he said, so when you worship me, cause I laid down singing for 15 years, and worship was a part of my life, yeah. all my life. But I laid it down for 15 years. And one day, uh, my pastor at the time came to me. She said, I want you to just start maybe singing twice a month for us. And I said, okay. And honestly, I didn't think I had missed it. And the first time I started singing again, it was a different sound. Yeah. It really was a different sound that even I didn't recognize come out of me, but it was from a place a relationship because I had built a relationship with yeah. Christ. Yeah. Now I'm singing from a place of wholeness and healing. Yeah. And because I'm singing to Him, I don't care really what anybody thinks about my voice or, or me singing, yeah. but it is the instrument He gave me. Yeah. And He breathed life into man. And when He breathed His breath into man in Genesis, it just told me every time I, I want to panic or have anxiety, if I just take a deep breath, that's God's breath. Yes. That's his breath in my lungs. So yes. I'm giving him his breath back yes. when I use it to bring Ooh. glory to his name. I love how you phrased that. So I, I am going to get you to belt out a song <laughs> or a couple lines or you don't have to sing the whole thing, but something. <laughs> but I remember, you know, as a young leader in the church and just how um, you, you guys did a worship album mm -hmm. and you were there and there's all these candles and it would end. I would, you know, that's when there was tapes. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I wore out some serious <laughs> tapes. Yeah. And um, and I remember one of the first times I saw you after that, I'm like, can you sing that song for me? <laughs> right, I thought I was crazy, but I'm like, oh my gosh. But just just whatever's on your heart, just minister, just like well, God. Since we're talking about the breath of God, yeah. the song yeah. that actually is ministering the most to me nowadays, yes. it's different songs in different yes. seasons. Yeah. But this season of my life, the song that's really blessing my heart is, it's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in my lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Oh. Great are you, Lord. He is so great. He's, he is so good. He's really a good Amen. God. He is a good God. He's a great God. Okay, you're coming back to do a music show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have a whole worship set. Um, oh, thank you for singing that. Oh, thank you. You, you, are, you are a worshiper. And, um, and it's hard. It, it is so many, and you know, I felt, you know, just a little tap on my shoulder when you were talking about church hurt. And we don't mm. want to bash the church. We no. love the bride. Yeah. Jesus loves his bride. <laughs> yeah, he does. And we cannot tell Jesus his bride stinks or yeah. isn't great. He loves his bride. Yes. But he also says that he's coming back for a bride that's not, you know, doesn't have a wrinkle, spot, or blemish, right. which insinuates right now we have, we're wrinkled, we're right. sp <laughs> spotted, and we're blemished. Yes. But there are people that are just saying, I can't, I love Jesus, but I just can't go back to church. Yeah. And you minister to a lot of those people. Yes. So yes. how do you coach them back into that place to get their eyes off the tool and the mechanism that God uses yeah. 
onto him who is the head of the bride? That's a good question. And I've asked myself that question before too. And God really showed, showed me in my life that whenever someone has experienced church hurt and they have been hurt by the church, we're all human. Yeah. Not one person in church or behind a pulpit is perfect. That's right. The, 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 the anointing of God is on men and women to speak the word of God. And he says his word will not return void. It is not up to me to decide who God uses and speaks through That's and right. whether someone is receiving from it or not. That's right. Because he told me, he, he just grabbed me one day when I was driving down the road. He said, Angie, you're complaining about all this, all these people that have hurt you that are supposed to be Christians. But he said, you know what? He said, they're my children too. Mm -hmm. You have two kids. Now I ask you, are you going to pick one or the, uh, over the other That's just because right. one's not acting right one day? Yeah. And I said, well, no, I guess I would. <laughs> I guess I'll shut up then. <laughs> he said, I love them as much as I love you. Yeah. So you worry about building you yeah. and healing you, and you let me worry about them because they're my kids too. And get your eyes off of them and off a of man and put your eyes on me. So when I started going back to church and I began to see things and sometimes again and, and it wanted to, I, it could have caused triggers inside yeah. of me, but I immediately ran to God and said, yeah. okay, God, yeah. this is nothing because yeah. your kingdom is bigger than these That's people right. and bigger than the four walls of the church I go to. I go because we cannot survive without community yes. and we cannot do this alone. We were meant to be in groups yeah. of people to support each other. Jesus had his disciples. Yeah. He wants us to be in with other believers. So we have to push our flesh aside and get past that discomfort and say yes to God. Yes, that's good. That That's rich and that's really good. And um, I, God is touching you. If you've had church hurt, he'll heal your heart. He yeah. will heal your heart. Listen, Angie and I have both been pastors. We've caused church hurt, Absolutely. not intentionally, Absolutely. not intentionally, yes. but in our humanity, That's right. in a hurry, yeah. in something we thought was doctrinally yeah. or scripturally correct. And and um, and listen, I need grace and mercy. And so in order to get it, I have to extend That's right. grace and mercy. Yes. And, yes. and knowing God can discipline his own children, like you said. Yeah. You know, when there's many times my husband and I could have put our mouth on something mm -hmm. and uh, exposed something, right. brought something up, and the Lord said, I don't need you to discipline your brothers and sisters. That's I'm right. the parent. That's right. Just like he said to you. Yes. It's That's really right. good. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I want to talk about your relationship with your daddy. Okay. Because you have such an amazing dad. Your mom too, but yeah. I'm, I see you and your dad together right. doing ministry. Yes. And bumping ideas off each other. and. And he has a whole theological seminary, right? Yes. And you yep. co-partner and teach. Yes. Talk yes. about that relationship because Absolutely. you're a daddy's girl. I am a daddy's girl, <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yes, I am a daddy's girl. And we do have a leadership institute. It's called Doggett Leadership Institute. And you can find that at doggettleadershipinstitute.com. But uh, we birthed this. He, he always felt a call to the nations. He said, yeah. somehow or another, God told me I would reach the nations. And he said, I thought it was going to be by going there in person. Person, but when the pandemic happened, yeah. we birthed this Leadership Institute yeah. online <laughs> and it has been growing ever since. And he is reaching all those nations more than he could ever travel to in Praise his lifetime. God. So God is already fulfilling his promise through that. But dad and I, we've, we've always been close. I guess um, mom, you know, she was the, the epitome of the perfect room mother and mom. She raised us. She was the homemaker, Proverbs 31 woman <laughs> in the house. But my dad... He knew how to, to teach my heart about ministry yeah. and getting out front and just being kind to others and, and be open. He is the true uh, father of the prodigal son. Yeah. He's the one that holds his arms open and says, okay, you made a mistake. Come on, yeah. come on home. Let's talk about it. So and he loved you through your season. He loved me through my season. He knew when to change hats. Yeah. When I needed a father, I, he said, okay, what hat do you want me to wear oh. when I answer this question? And I said, well, today I need the daddy hat. And then sometimes I would ask him, no, I need you to be my, my pastor. I need you to speak to me strongly and tell me in this situation, am I being too prideful or too personal or what should I do? Yeah. He knew how to change those hats. Yeah. So one of the topics that you love and that God's, you know, just got you in is just about your in intimacy mm -hmm. and love, acceptance. Yes. So I just want you to kind of share about that. And then I want you to pray with, with people that are watching. Absolutely. Uh, God is just a good God. Yeah. He's a great God. And he's not only in love with me or you or whoever's watching today, but he's madly in love with you. I think if we can have that understanding of what it means to be madly in love with someone, that he would lay everything down 
just to meet you where you are today. And his love is unending. Yeah. And it is, you can come to him just as you are. A lot of times we want to fix ourselves before we go to God. He says, no, come as you are. Just the mess you're in, let me fix you. Because if we fix ourselves, we're going to fix something wrong. But if we give ourselves to him and we give him totally our hearts, our minds, our bodies, all of us, our spirits, and say, God, I surrender completely to you. You have your way in my life then you don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of you. He's going to order your steps. He's going to direct your path. And he's going to be right there with you to comfort you and hold you just like my dad held me and has comforted me here in the, in the natural life that I live. But I want to pray for those of you today that are struggling with your faith. You're struggling with whether or not you want, you want to believe in God, but you don't trust him because he's failed you in the past. But you know what? God never fails. He's right there with us every step of the way. So let me agree with you right now in prayer. Father God, I pray for those that are watching today that are struggling in their faith. They're struggling in their salvation, Lord God. They're struggling with going back to church maybe. Heal the hurt. Heal the pain, Father God. You can mend all the broken pieces, Father. And I pray that you will give them a boldness, a confidence, a God confidence right now to take that next step Go to church next Sunday, find a place to worship and to connect with like-minded believers because that is our support system. That's what you've given us to help us walk this walk of faith. And if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior right now, just say, Lord, mm -hmm. I love you. I want to know you more. Come in, into my heart. Come right now, Lord, and change my heart so that I can serve you the way that I want to serve you. Heal my heart. Heal my brokenness. I repent of all my sin and I commit myself to you. And just like that, Jesus done it. He has done it. He's done it. I'm from Louisiana. He done it. <laughs> and it is all good with you and God. Just Amen. like that, that instant prayer makes it all good with him. Yes. He's, he's so gracious. He's so amazing. Thank you for ministering. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for praying, Angie. You're absolutely precious. Listen, if you accepted Jesus Christ today, if you red, reded, rededicated your life today, if you were a prodigal daughter or a prodigal son that decided to come home, would you let us know so that we can pray? We have an entire intercessory prayer team. We have a whole CTN team um, and prayer is so important and we'll help you get connected. So go to come home at ctnonline.com and send your prayer requests or let us know that you accepted Christ today. And I encourage you, follow Angie. She's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> YouTube. She's an incredible speaker, invite her to your conference. Follow her, her encouraging words and pray for her. Um, God is using her, using she and, and her father to build leaders. What we do, we must do quickly because Jesus yes. is coming soon. Maranatha, he is Amen. coming. Thank you for supporting CTN. You know, we rely on viewer support. And so send in a seed, donate, pray for us, partner with us, one-time gift monthly. Uh, we're so grateful um, for anything that you do. It counts. It matters and it will be accredited to you as righteousness in the kingdom. We'll see you tomorrow. Share this program. Let us know what took place in your heart today. And I'm so grateful for you. My name is Jen Mallon and I encourage you to come home.